So let's make an assessment tool out of this. Uh, the first thing I probably better do is uh, unlock this, uh, which it is okay. And so um, I can uh, I can grab this here, and so I want to take this over to another one, and I'm going to copy the whole thing. All right, and now I'm going to add one here onto your workbook, just for for simplicity. And this one here, I'm going to slide it down here to the end. And then I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to go uh, Mad uh, Minute, like this. And that's what you're going to do here, is make a Mad Minute. So let's, let's paste this in here just to have something to work with. All right. So first of all, um, we can take these off of here. We have these in here. So uh, for this purposes, we're not going to want the conditional because we want it to be an assessment. So I think you can come back here to uh, the data or to the home to the, this Sierra formatting and just tell it to clear the rules. Clear rules from selected cells or entire sheet. Okay, so now they're gone. All right. Now let me show you a couple other things here how we can do this. Um, one of the nice things about this here, you can pull just certain ones out. Uh, you you obviously first thing you could do is uh, uh, s um, sort them differently if you want to. Let's just say uh, you're going to sort this way. Uh, you're going to sort by column uh, uh, C and smallest to largest. So maybe you want to go largest to smallest. You, you you can do some things like that. And this again has stayed the same. And same way if we do these, if we take make sure you get it all together and then say uh, we're going to sort and we're going to sort by C uh, largest to smallest and it's just a different look at it but you also can do this you can pull one at a time out of here or uh, uh, copy it if you want or, or cut it I'm going to move what down here and start my uh, thing here so this this is still the same and so I want just say two I can uh, I can pull these out of here, all right. And so you just keep uh, uh, putting those in here, how however you want them to be, and uh, come up with a nice mix. Now we only have one through or zero through three or two here, but you may have the entire thing. And so you would say, I don't know what makes a nice mad minute for older students, like sixty. So you have 60 different ones. You may have several pages. You may have them go straight down. But here's some tricks to that trade to the Mad Minute. Obviously, you can't have these in here unless that's what you want in there. All right. And uh, things like that. But here, here's what makes it kind of interesting is this, that you could hide this. And now they can't tell if they got them right or not, unless you want them to. But if you don't want them to see that, and again, you'll lock it like we did before. So that the only thing they can get at is this. And for uh, assessment purposes, that's how you'd always do it, is you would lock it. And let me remind you quickly how we did locking. We came down back here to Home, Font, and to Protection. And make sure unclick the locked one. All right, and we'd say it's all of these here are in the quiz. And so we would say again that these are the ones that are unlocked. That's, that's how you have to do it. Each one you want unlocked. Whatever you don't do this to will still be locked. Okay, that's why it's important to, to every, wherever you want the answers. It can't just be a portion of them. And then again, under the review, you're going to tell it to lock the rest and put a... Uh, a thing in there if you want to. So now watch when I uh, put these in here it doesn't say whether they're correct or not. And maybe y you you want them to see that but then what's so nice for you you come back later uh, when you want to evaluate and you unlock this sheet and then you you come back later and tell it to unhide and it comes back and then with a glance you can see what's right and what's not and quickly count them okay now 
can I show you something a little sneaky? It's a little sneaky. Let's do some, uh, not only the, the self-correct, let's tabulate here to make this even quicker. So let's come back to this formula. Instead of here saying great job, let's say this says a one. And if it's wrong, instead of this, let's say this. Now look what happens if I put in here, if I get this right, or if I get it wrong. Now why do I want that? Because I'm going to take that all the way down. Can you see what's coming? Alright, and now I can tabulate them. Let's put a formula in here like this. And so let's see here. I come back to data. Our formulas right here. Sort of formula. And I'm just going to sum these. And okay. And again, you're going to have this hidden. So this doesn't even show up. This doesn't even show up till you're done with it and you look at it. And again, you have this formatted and stuff like this and a student is doing this um, and they don't know, they're, they're going fast. And when it's locked like this, as you hit the enter, it goes to the next one for them. So it's kind of nice, okay? And just say that's all I get done. That's all I get done there. Okay, so it's a mad minute. I don't get any more than that done. And so the, the timer stops. And again, I come back and I un, unhide these. And you have it. Okay, it tells me how many I got right. All right. Now. Here's what I want you to do with it too, with uh, anything like this you're building for students, because the best way to share this will be through shared drop boxes or uh, something. Um, even this could be pushed to Google Classroom, even though it's not a Google Doc, you could send it that way and have them submit it back. But uh, you want to keep it as in real time as possible. Uh, but here's a trick that I'm going to have you do also is when you go to save it, save as. This is the way to make sure your one is never messed up for whoever it was. And I would make individual ones for individual students or something like that or show them how to do that. But when you save this uh, to wherever you're saving it, under here, workbook, uh, you want to do this. It's a template, macro enabled template. And uh, the reason for that is every time you save it as a template, and that's PowerPoint, Word, anything, it has the word template in it it goes like this uh, let me just show you what happens uh, on this um, I'm gonna drop this here very interesting and I'll put uh, show you how I'd, I would put it here also and then I'd put the student name here and so I would say I would have them do it like this and the reason I always start things with last name is so you can sort them that's why it said their first name you start with their first their last name that way you can always sort it and now watch what happens when I do that if it's a template. Now, uh, after it's a template, now this, when it's a template like this, it no longer will let me get out of here without it asking me to save. So here it is, whether I did this, or this, or this, or this, or all the above, when I'm done with it, it doesn't allow me uh, to, to do it. So I want to get out of here, so now I just go like this, and it says you want to save, and I say save, but it won't let me. It automatically has to ask me where I want to save it, and that way they can never save it as the template that you have it as, that this is all theirs. And now when they save it, now it can be open. It's not a template anymore right here. So that's what I'd have you do this too. When you save this in your Dropbox, save it as a, uh, a template. And I'll, again, I'll show you, go to Save As, and it's here, this macro-enabled template. 
All right, and then that allows uh, that will keep them from messing up your your original one here. And that that's how you would share it. Uh, you could share it with several people too because they can't save over your stuff. It always will ask them for something else. It's it's a template, and Word and, and that has it also. So you're going to create a mad minute for this one here on the end of your workbook, and you're going to make it so it can be hidden like this. You're going to put these in here instead of the great jobs, and you're going to put this down here for a total. And then you're going to save it as a template. Now here's another idea. Once you have this established, you have the student's name up here. Now do this. Create these one at a time and when you create them uh, like this, uh, make a new sheet, you get this. Let's start putting these by date. Let's say this is, you know, December 1 or something like that or you could you could hyphen it like this. 1 um, slash 1 slash so our dot 1 dot 15 and just keep going like that across here and that way you keep them all together and that normally the newer ones come here and you can have them go back and uh, uh, look at them too and again you can have them how often you're going to do it or what thing but you have them all in one spot there and you have a running total and then they have them too and then you have a, an online evidence of uh, their progress or lack of progress and you can set this up with about anything other than that you can use the multiplication division whatever it is you want to use but this uh, has lots of applications to keep permanent uh, records of assessments here uh, like this and so uh, you could have them, uh, they can review from this. And you could show them, you can lock each sheet. Uh, you can um, protect this whole sheet here so they can't, uh, they can't mess with it after they have it. Whatever you want to do, uh, but you want it electronically available to you. That's why I suggest the Dropbox so that you can see it, they can see it. You can edit it, they can edit it. You can put new stuff in. That's why you don't want to be sending it back and forth in email because then it's not real time. Whoever has the latest version is it. And so you'll teach the students how to set up Dropbox and stuff. So feel free to do this also. Put some things like this on the bottom so you, you know how to do it, remember how to do it. Oh, and you want to go another step? You could do this. You could put this right in here. Here's their total for this one. Rather than have to open, open them, you come in here and put the date uh, like we did here and put the uh, the number correct right next to it like this you want to keep the date 15 dot uh, say they got 24 and it's like this all right and then you have that so you don't have to open them to remember what they had right on them how many they had right and keep that and then you would by the end of the year you would have a ton of them across here and every time you make a new one make sure it slid to the front here so the newest ones here so they're in inverse order and that'll be cool too and you'll be the coolest teacher in school <laughs>